Salesforce has a new vision for Tableau. They're calling it Tableau Next. And in this video, I want to spend 10 minutes taking you through the core fundamentals of the platform. You might also be wondering what's happening with the traditional products, Tableau Desktop, Tableau Prep, Tableau Server. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be running in parallel with this new platform. So what I want to do is take you through what we know so far. Everything we're seeing is from demos and examples. And I made a much longer video that spends an hour and a half going into that detail. This video is the summary, the 10 minute summary you can share with your colleagues. My name is Tim. I'm a Tableau visionary. And as I like to say on this channel, let's get stuck in. Now, this new platform is built around three core philosophies. The first one, in my opinion, is the shift away from products towards experiences. What does that mean? Well, in today's Tableau, if you're trying to do a piece of work, you probably have a couple of bits of software open. You have Tableau Desktop. You'll then have the browser open for Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud. And then additionally, if you're doing data prep before all of that, then you'll have Tableau Prep. These are all disparate products designed to do very specific things, but it makes for a very cluttered experience. You have to switch between all these experiences and it's not ideal. In the new version of Tableau and Tableau Next, everything is under one roof in the browser. So everything is one seamless experience and you'll be switching between workspaces and different areas where you do your work, but it's all fundamentally linked and there is no hard switch between each of these areas. The next is this focus on more assisted modes of work. Now, what do I mean by assistance? Well, in this new vision, the big push behind this whole entire platform is agent force. This is a Salesforce push for agentic AI, and that's been weaved into the Tableau Next platform. And what this enables is for you to be able to use AI to complete some parts of your workflow. Now, there is always this opinion that sometimes AI can do all our work, but I think this platform positions AI AI in a very useful way. You can either use it to do small parts of your workflow or you can use it to do large parts of your workflow. But this assistance is a recurring theme throughout the demos we've seen so far. The best example I have is obviously the semantic model. You're able to use AI to suggest the tables to link up for your data model as you build it. And it even allows you to reuse work that has been built elsewhere. The last big philosophy change is this idea of going from more static setups to more proactive setups. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of analytical solutions today, you build a solution, you deploy it, and then you leave them there and people come and consume them and they just sit there as assets waiting to be consumed by individuals. The problem is that people have to go to them. And yes, we have capabilities like alerts today, but they're not really proactive. In this new vision for Tableau, Tableau is thinking about proactive ways of alerting you about changes in your data and even giving you insight in a proactive way, giving you little nudges towards areas of your data that might need your attention. All of these put together form, I think, the basis of this platform and a lot of the product decisions that exist inside of the platform. But I will say one thing, in the demos we've seen so far, there's been a big focus on AI and there hasn't been much of a showcase of how to do some of this work manually. So this could all be a ruse. It could, it could just all be a little bit of a distraction to get you to focus on agentic AI. But nonetheless, I think it's a pretty, pretty strong direction that they're hinting to. Now, the first question you probably have is when will it be live? When can I get my hands on it? When can I try it? Well, that's a bit of a tricky answer because it's being launched in phases. Some parts of it are already live today. Tableau Semantics, as an example, is live today. The data cloud is also live today. But this is a really difficult thing to explain because when I say those things are live, they're not live in the same sense that the Tableau community thinks of them. Let me explain this because this is something that I've really struggled to understand in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, Tableau and Salesforce now tend to release features in phases, and they typically have a status called a GA, general availability. Now, a lot of the Tableau ecosystem has traditionally been delivered through Tableau. And since the Salesforce acquisition, some of the features inside of the Salesforce ecosystem have been rebranded with the Tableau name. So when we talk about Tableau semantics and we talk about data cloud, you might wonder, well, where are they in the Tableau ecosystem? And you'll go to the Tableau website and you won't find anything there. You'll actually have to look over in the Salesforce ecosystem to understand that those features are available in the Salesforce ecosystem. So when we talk about semantics, that is available in the Salesforce ecosystem. When we talk about the data cloud, that is available in the Salesforce ecosystem. And in order to access all of this AI capability, you'll also need another thing, which is the Tableau Plus license. So those are really the key things you need to be aware of. You, you'll need access in the Salesforce ecosystem. You'll also need access to the Tableau Plus license to see these features. And then if you have those two things, you'll start to be able to interact with some of the available features, semantics and data cloud. Those are available today. 
Later this year, we're likely to get some beta hands-on with some parts of the platform. And I think it's going to take up until 2026 to get the rest of the platform live. I'll put some dates that we've had pledged so far up on screen, but I don't want to date this video really, really quickly because I know that these dates don't always stick. They're not promises, but just to give you some idea of scale, this is when you should expect to see Tableau next fully live. Now, the other thing to be aware of here is that, of course, it's going to be running in parallel. With the existing Tableau. So for most people who are using Tableau today, there really shouldn't be a big change. But if you're starting Tableau today and if you're starting a new Tableau relationship, then I think you might want to evaluate which of the two platforms to spend your time in. It's also worth probably understanding what the different versions of Tableau are going to be. So let's come up with some names for them. Obviously, the new vision is called Tableau Next. I was previously calling the old versions of Tableau, the, the versions we have today, Tableau Legacy, but I've heard an internal name for these. It's actually called Tableau Core. So you can think of this split as being Tableau Core, the Tableau you know today, and Tableau Next, the new version of Tableau. The next thing to cover are the core experiences and the canvas upon which they work on in the platform. So I'm going to break this down into experiences and then let's talk about the platform components as the other half. First up, experiences. The first one is the Data Pro experience. Now, this is essentially the visualization building component of Tableau Next. It's ideally designed for you to help prepare and visualize your data, and it's persistent throughout the platform. Anytime you want to visualize anything, you can go off and create a chart. But the interesting thing about this is that each chart becomes part of a larger workspace. I'll come on to workspaces soon. And in essence, you can bring these charts together to form a much bigger experience. But nonetheless, you are essentially creating modular assets that you can use throughout the platform. And they obviously feed into a hierarchy that exists in your workspace. Again, I'll show you that soon. So that's the first one. Data Pro, a way to visualize your data. Concierge is slightly different. This is more like a personal assistant, sort of helping you understand your data. It's like a, a sidekick that's helping you process and understand what's going on in your data. And it's it's a very subtle thing because there's also another one called Inspector. And Inspector's job is essentially to go into your data and actually pull out insights, be proactive about bringing them to you. And so the way they sort of show these two experiences working in tandem is super important but they are drastically different experiences. And it makes sense as the kind of thing you have to see to understand. But I think these two are going to be potentially really powerful because for a long time in analytics, a lot of the capabilities have been very static and actually analysts have had to work very, very hard to pull out insights. And that is all time consuming work. The problem is there's not enough analysts to build those kinds of insights really quickly. And so if this truly works as intended, then there's a really big ability here for Tableau to be able to surface insights in a way that's never really been possible before. It's heavily reliant on a good semantic model. We'll come on to that later. Now, the last thing to call out is analytical apps. Now, earlier on, we talked about Data Pro. You build out these small visualizations. Well, you can build those visualizations up into what Tableau or Salesforce is going to call analytic apps. Now, apps are essentially a little bit more of a transition from dashboards. And it's a simple idea is that, look, dashboards are great. They're great for consuming information, but it's very hard to take actions. In this vision, what they're showing us is the ability not just to build an app, not just the ability to theme it and style it very, very quickly, but actually to be able to tie it in to insight and actions that come off that. So it's a very sort of different framing to what we've been familiar with, with dashboards inside of Tableau. Now, I'll keep saying this again throughout this video. This is all speculation just based on the demos we've seen so far. After conference, after we get our hands on more, we'll be able to do a lot more. Now, the final thing to cover are what I would call the platform components. The first one, which is, I think, for the first time, really, really important, is a semantic model. In Tableau today, what you've had to do is build your data sources up inside of products, inside of Tableau Prep, inside of Tableau Desktop, on Tableau Server. You've had to really think of um, your data sets as assets that move between these experiences. In the new Tableau, they're focusing this whole entire vision around semantic models. This idea that your data is composed in a semantic model, set up in one place, and every other asset, every other thing that in touches that data, pulls from that semantic model. So in this new vision, semantic models are right and center in this platform. And I think they're super important. Now you might wonder, well, how do I find a semantic model? How do I relate it to my domain or experience? 
that's where workspaces come in. Workspaces are essentially spaces that a team or a unit in a business can essentially use to collect all their assets in one place. There's a really nice hierarchy that Salesforce has been showing here that allows you to really step up all the way from your data to semantic models, to your prep flows, all the way up to your visualizations and your apps at the very top. Uh, I'll put some graphics up on screen so you can see this, but this is a really core concept to understand. And as I think Tableau show us more and more demos, we'll really start to understand the power of this workspace. Now, the thing that we haven't seen so far is how easy it is to really be composable with these assets that sit inside of the workspaces. So when we get more detail about that, I think that will be one of the first things I'll be trying to figure out how dynamic, how flexible are these workspaces? And the last thing that I'm not so familiar with is, of course, the agent force integration. Of course, I'd leave this last because I'm not native with the Salesforce ecosystem. But if you're native with the Salesforce ecosystem, this should be an important component for you because it will allow you to integrate not just the skills that we see here inside of Tableau Next, but also all the other AI agents that sit inside of the agent force platform. So this is the whole idea that this is being backed by the Salesforce agent force setup. And the Gentic AI is going to be something that flows all the way through from Tableau, all the way through other products like Slack, the Salesforce ecosystem, and even going as far as messaging as an example that they showed in the demo. So that's what I can sort of cover so far. And that's where I want to leave it because everything else is pretty much covered in more detail in my previous video. Go ahead and check that out. But I wanted to keep this short and sweet so you can really have one resource that gives you all the kind of key things you need to know about the new platform as we head into conference. I'd be really keen to know your thoughts in the comments below. I know this is a pretty radical shift for Tableau and it's a pretty radical shift in general for analytics. I think Salesforce is taking a big bet here. And I said this in, a, in another video when we talked about Tableau Next and the naming. I said that, look, Salesforce have to be willing to challenge 20% of its customer base to make a product that's really going to serve 80% of its users. And that's going to be a really tough transition. If they get this right, this could be a really, really powerful thing. But so far, we haven't seen enough and we don't know enough about the platform to be able to make that judgment. I think conference is going to be a really big deal because I think to get there, you do have to make some accommodations for that 20% that are loving your product today. We'll see if it happens. My name is Tim. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.